Welcome to the Stark Reflections on Writing and Publishing podcast. There has never been a better time for writers. More information, options, and opportunities are available to you. But navigating these requires insight. Join Mark Leslie Lefebvre as he draws upon more than a quarter century of experience as a writer, a bookseller, and a trusted book industry consultant to explore and reflect on the writing and publishing landscape to help you make informed choices on your writer journey. Hello, Reflectives, and welcome to episode 58 of the Stark Reflections podcast. This is your host, Mark Leslie Lefebvre. Thanks for hanging out with me this week. In today's episode, I have an interview with Wynne Charles. Born with cerebral palsy, Wynne Charles has defied the odds by becoming an author. Her memoir, I Win, is an amazing story of how she remembers her life through the years of having a condition called CP. As a competitor in the Kona Ironman Triathlon, CEO of her own jewelry design company, and motivational speaker, Win Charles is truly an unstoppable inspiration. And you'll get to hear about that yourself firsthand shortly in the interview section of the show. But first, a quick personal update, and this update is short and ties directly into this episode's sponsor, Findaway Voices. I managed this week to record another chapter from the seven P's of publishing success, which I will be uploading to Findaway Voices for distribution to Audible, Kobo Audiobooks, Apple Audiobooks, Google Play, and dozens of other retail and library channels around the world for audiobooks. In essence, the largest network of global audiobook retailers and libraries available to you directly through Findaway Voices. Now, the reason I'm working on this audiobook uh, is that with the four audiobooks that I currently have out, I have one novel and three shorter projects that are less than 20,000 words in length. Uh, I just received this week uh, another payment from Findaway Voices. And... When I looked at the invoice that came in, or the invoices that this payment was associated with, the money from this particular payment comes from four of the many sources available through Findaway, and this time the four sources for this payment were Playster, Highbooks, Bountiful, Authors Direct. Now admittedly, I have no idea who Highbooks and Bountiful are, or or at least I didn't uh, until I saw the invoice. And now I have to go look into them. And I'll post links to both of those platforms in the show notes. This is just an example of the way that you look at something when you first go into it. And I was fully expecting that most of my sales would most likely be through you know, Audible, which is the largest uh, audio uh, retailer. Of course, because my uh, projects are less than eight to ten hours in length. Even the the full length novel uh, is only about uh, a five hour audiobook. I'm not making my sales through uh, a place like Audible, which is uh, subscription based, because the monthly fee, fifteen dollars, is far higher than than the retail price for that book. So I'm making uh, the money through other channels with these smaller projects, and I find it fascinating. And it's not something I was expecting. And so every time I see the money come in, I always want to check the source to see where it's coming from. And it's not coming from the major retailers. It's coming from all those other sources. Yet another reason why it's important to be distributed wide. And that's not just with ebooks, but with audiobooks. And uh, making sure that your income as a writer can come from multiple sources because these sources do add up in a very positive way over time. Now, if you want to learn how you can leverage the power of Find Away Voices, you can learn more about that at starkreflections.ca slash findaway. But that's enough about the personal update and this episode's sponsor. Let's get right into the interview with Wynn Charles. Hey, Wynn, thank you so much for joining me here on the podcast today. Well, I'm so honored to have you to be a guest of yours. And as you know, you guys should probably go back and listen to Ask When, when I interview Mark, because Mark and I did our interview 
to get on my podcast. So I am so honored to be interviewed by you, Mark. And I am a 10-time published book author now. I just dropped my ninth book or my maybe it's my tenth book, um, Smile with Dictation on Draft to Digital, which is a wonderful company, which you are part of. And I'm not just saying that to be nice because I'm on your podcast. I'm just saying Draft to Digital is the best in general of what I found. It's the easiest book conversion company out there, unlike some other competition we shall not mention on this podcast, aka Amazon, but we shall not mention them. <laughs> but I have cerebral palsy. I have a physical disability, which means I can't type with a dawn. And so okay. my latest book is Smile with Dictation, how I write books with dictation, using the power of Dragon Naturally Speaking on both PC and Mac, and then using the power of Siri on my iPhone, on Macs, on iPads. Okay. So this book, uh, this is recently published, recently released, uh, Smile with Dictation. So do you say you use Siri, uh, so that's Apple product for your Macintosh or your iPhone, um, as well as Dragon uh, Dictation? Yeah. Yes. I have a laptop, which is a PC. I was trained on a Macintosh, so I got used to Siri on my original iPhone, iPhone number one. I wrote, I win on my iPhone. Yeah, that was a fight and a half. So you wrote, I win using Siri on your iPhone? Yes, yes. Okay. Using the iPhone number one, and Siri wasn't that good back then. And now she's gotten a lot better, but Dragon Naturally Speaking is also good because when I say period, it puts the period. I tested it yesterday. So, yeah. So so how long does it take? How long did it take for you to train, uh, train your dragon uh, to, to, to to, like, so. Train my dragon. So to speak, it it took about a good two hours I, because I'm so used to speech dictation, I know it's tendency. I know I'm talking to a, a robot. And so it took about a good two hours. But to train my dragon, so to speak, and no, we're not talking about the kids' movie, well, <laughs> um, it took about a good two hours. And okay. I am happy with it. It's working right now when I transfer back over to Mac, I will definitely be using Siri, or I might just stick with Dragon Naturally Speaking, because Dragon Naturally Speaking finally came out for Mac, and I have that, mm. I have that CD, so I might as well stick with Dragon Naturally Speaking. Okay, and so um, I Win, how many years ago did that, that was your first book, and how many years that ago did that That was my first book, and that came out eight, eight years ago, eight years eight ago, years exactly. Ago. Okay. So how much better is the technology for you to use than it was? So you, you had done, used Siri uh, to dictate I Win, and, and then eight years later, you, you, you did just recently released a book and used Dragon. How much better is the technology than when you started? Oh my God. Oh my God, I still have the original man in your script on my iPhone of um, I, I win. And oh my God, it's like really silly picks up what I say in two seconds flat. So does Dragon Naturally Speaking. Now, due to my cerebral palsy in the 90s, we spent, and I say we because my family and I spent over a thousand dollars on speech dictation software for me and my dad having his own speech impediment issues being from Boston back east that um, 
speech dictation software could not pick him up it could not pick me up so oh my god the technology has gotten so much better as to say i can write a book on two seconds flat and when i'm sitting at my laptop i can open up dragon naturally speaking and type away or okay. speak with so let's let's uh let's talk about your workspace and and how you do that do you do you write in the same room uh every day like uh, where you have your laptop set up or I, how do you what's the process like i used to and i know this is bad i used to have my laptop set up in my bedroom which mm-hmm. i finally moved it out to my office aka okay. wind's wall because i'm like this is not good. This is not good. I would be tempted to wake up in the middle of the night and write books. So I'll do a homework. <laughs> I'll do something. So I'm like, this is not good. Having the laptop in the room is not good. So I moved it out to my office and I put it on my schedule like I do everything else. Because without my schedule, I would have a million people walking in and out asking me questions. <laughs> so that's um, that's the way I do it. Okay. All right. And have you always wanted to be a writer? Have I always wanted to be a writer? Well, when I was in third grade, I my teachers knew I had CP. And at the time, my able-bodied classmates and myself were learning cursive writing. And my teacher at the time said, well, how can we teach wind cursive writing when she has a physical disability? My dad mm-hmm. goes, you can't take a pencil out of wind's hand. So forget <laughs> about it. And my teacher goes, okay, dad, we'll teach wind cursive writing. Needless to say, my hand writing is terrible. I don't even think they teach cursive writing anymore in schools or maybe they don't but needless to say i was always playing teacher i was always writing i was always i have some of my original books floating around here a book that i did in first grade and so needless to say give me a book with blank pages i write my little heart out i (laughs) <laughs> take it to my heart's content. <laughs> and so that, uh, let's go back to the first book, the first book. So a uh, brilliant title, uh, I Win, uh, because, you know, there's a beautiful play on on words. Um, what is that book about and what compelled you to want to write that one? Okay, back, let's back up here before I vote, I Win. Um, I had a tragic loss in my life which I fully admit in that book. I lost my biological mom to meningitis slash a brain aneurysm. She went into the hospital with a slow waking brain aneurysm, needless to say, got meningitis. And while she was in a mentally, I wanted to write I Win since I was 17 years old. I definitely wanted to write about my legacy since I was 17 years old. Fast forward to when I'm 23, I'm going through the loss of my mom, her being in medically induced coma. And I remember the day I asked her, her medical machines were beeping a thousand miles a minute. And if you guys have ever been in the ICU, you know what I'm talking about. And so to get her medical machines stopped long enough for me to answer, ask this question. I had to say, I love you, mom. I love you, mom. I love you, mom, over a thousand times. And of course, she was parked right by the nurse's station. You would think nurses would come into the ICU, turn the medical machines off. Of course, they did. They are so used to that noise that it doesn't face them. So after that, after me saying, I love you, mom, I love you, mom, over over a thousand times, I was able to ask her, I said, well, since 
Jan Medlein Duskoma, is it okay if I write this book? And telepathically, she said to me, yes, as long as you don't spill too many family secrets. And so I decided to use Siri to write this book. It took me a year. I gave myself a year, and I just kept doing it every single day. And finally, when it came out, I threw pasta against the wall and saw it stick. And then that led me to this crazy podcasting journey because people were asking me, how do you deal with cerebral palsy so gracefully? And it's like, yeah. You guys want to know the answer now if the and I come a win. And so I decided to start a podcast and interview people like you and interview other authors. And I try on Twitter to do my best to support other independent authors because I know how difficult it is. I mean, I know how difficult it is to get to reach and the podcasting community and the authors community has really embraced me. Oh, that's fantastic. So, I mean, but it's not enough that you're an author because that would be enough. Uh, And it's hard enough to be an author, as you know. But you have also other things that you do. You're a motivational speaker. You uh, have created jewelry and have a company for that. And and you also, as, as I understand it, you've done an Ironman? Yes. Oh, okay. yes, I have. Oh, yes, I have. <laughs> when, when do you have time for this? Never mind I'm overcoming <laughs> cerebral palsy no, for this. Never mind. You have time never, for all mind this? Um, never mind that. I used to be uh, where the joy company comes in, and I wrote about that in my novel. And um, where the joy company comes in, I used to be a self taught digital artist before I gave it all up for writing books and um, what I used to do is put my artwork on Joy so that's where that comes in and then when I did the Kona Ironman I had my teammate help me and surprise me and I I remember that day like it was yesterday when she told me I'm sitting in my office talking to her on a landline and she's in the Bahamas and she's in NASA Bahamas and she goes I have a surprise for you and um, by the third time she said it I'm like okay just let the cat out of the bag and I she goes do you want to do a do you want to do an Iron Man with me and then eventually make it to Kona? And for those of you who are thinking, wins nuts, win is nuts. And I remember saying to my teammate, um, you're nuts. I'm not in a physical shape. I have sample palsy. How are we going to do this? And she did a uh, swim. She did the bike with me on Fortunately, due to the winds at Harvey Kona, we got taken down because of the winds, and we did not finish the run. So if we did, I wouldn't be sitting talking to you as the first Iron Man champion with cerebral palsy. But I am the first woman with cerebral palsy to do the Kona Iron Man. Wow, that is amazing. And you also, as I understand it, so you have worked as a teacher, but now you're an administrator in teaching. Yes. I, <laughs> yes. So how, how does how has your experience shaped the way that you approach, you know, the realm of teaching and working with inspiring other people? Well, I, my mother immigrated here from Canada, and and she immigrated here from the Bahamas. She. So my mother had the American dream and she, I won't say lovingly, I will say she lovingly forced it on me. She goes, you got to be a doctor, you got to be a lawyer, you got to be a teacher. And those were my three options. 
<laughs> and so she kind of forced her dreams on me. She didn't say author or journalist in that speech. And I, yeah. So how teaching has affected my life, I want to show people what um, what you can do, not what you can't do. And that's why I published Smile with Dictation, because I want to show these stay-at-home moms and these stay-at-home dads and everyone else that you can write a book sitting at your kid's soccer game. It may take a little bit more time, but anyone could be an independently published author. Some of us have book deals and are more lucky to get the advance, but the technology is so good enough now that you can write a book on your iPhone. Oh, yeah, exactly, exactly. And and so you also do motivational speaking where you go. Do you do you talk to student groups? Who do you, what who are the types of groups that you speak to when you when you do your speaking? I um well I'm going to do that a little bit more when I finish my journalism degree, which will be in December of this year. I'm actually wait wait a second, you're also going to school while doing all these things. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah, we forgot to say that. I'm also oh, yes. going to school while I'm doing all these juggling acts. And so um and so I will be finished up with a journalism degree in December. And oh, wow. so I am slowly but surely stepping away from the education field because I don't know if you have the same problem in Canada and Monk, but we certainly do in the US where teachers just get paid low and teachers get paid once a month and they just get paid low. And so I want to um, help the teachers publish books if I can. I want to expand my journalism career. So that's why I'm getting the journalism degree. Okay. All right, cool. And so you have, uh, how long has Ask Win, the your podcast, how long has that been uh, out there? Four, four years and well over a thousand episodes. We now have a thousand episodes. Well, but a thousand episodes in, in four years. So you're obviously doing more than one a week. I'm not good at yeah. math. but uh, Oh, yeah. I'm okay. doing more than one a week. And so I particularly like interviewing authors and podcasters. So if any authors want to reach out to me, they're more than welcome to it because I know as an independent published author myself that how difficult it is to get press. And I know I'm actually going with a small independent publisher, Stonewall Press, here in the next couple months to see what they can do with my books. If not, I have a backup plan, which involves draft to digital. Draft to digital. And so, um, yeah. So okay. I'm planning that strategy out. And I'm also doing what I can to help the communities disabled and able-bodied alike. Well, that is fantastic. So when... When you think about this journey that you've been on, um, you know, as a as an in somebody who inspires other people to, you know, follow their dreams and understand, I, I love what you said. I love what you can do, not what you can't do, uh, which I think is a is a, a winning strategy. What would you go back and and tell Win from eight years ago? Well, what advice would you give her? I would I would have said um, if I knew that. If I knew how theory would have changed my life, and if I knew how speech dictation would have changed my life, I would have told her, you sit down in a chair in the ICU and write the book because um, then I could have read it to my mom when she was alive because by the time I asked her, she was in a medical in coma and there's nothing you can do do um, when a person is in mentally in coma. And I know that even though she gave me the blessing to write this book, I know that she would have like 
to hear me and read it out loud. So there I go. I would have told myself eight years ago, I would have um, told myself eight years ago to sit down in that chair in the ICU and start typing away on a book. That is fantastic. So uh, as I understand it, you also have audiobooks available. Is that true? I do. Okay. I do. And um, and I'm trying to get my books on to find a way in voices. And FYI, you guys, Mark will tell you this. If you use drafts to do it all, you don't have to pay the $45 fee to use find a way in voices. So there's another plug for Draft to do it all and <laughs> yeah. find a way by so that, that and but right now my books on the seven year contracts at um ACX ACX okay so, now did you use them to find a narrator or did you narrate them yourself how did you go about that because my voice isn't strong enough to um, narrate my own book even though I want to I want to narrate. Um, smile with dictation and use mm-hmm. find a way voices and that's uh, eventually going to come and so even though my voice isn't strong enough I found a nail later to nail later all my books you can either do a loyalty split which I did on I come a win because I didn't know what I was doing or you can pay them a flat fee which I have done in the past and a flat the the voice of artist um, request that now my voice of artist for I come and win she got so popular Cammy wins and she now charges a flat, flat fee I grabbed it right at the beginning of her career and I um, she and I did a loyalty split and so that's how I got I come and win all set up on ACX. Wow, that's uh, fantastic. So um, now that we have inspired people, now that you have inspired writers out there, can you let us know where can people find out more about you, like your website, and where they can uh, check out your books such as I Win or uh, the new Smile book? They can find me on Twitter and they can just click on I Made a Books to Read link by a draft to the journal. And if you just go to books3.com slash win, W-I-N, you can find Smile with Dictation on all your favorite um, digital platforms. And I, they can just Google Ask Win, and then I will send you the, the website as well so you can stick it in the show notes. I don't know how many people read show notes anymore. They um, they ask for podcasts, but I don't know how many people read show notes. That would <laughs> yeah, be I a, think more more people listen than find yeah, them, but more, if they're looking for them, they can find the show if notes. If they're looking for, for them, they can find the yeah, show notes. So exactly. we'll get that organized for you guys. But if you go to books3.com slash win, you can find a smile with dictation. And by the time it this comes out, it should be everywhere because Graph to Digital does a great job, and you you keep up the good work. You keep up, um, as I said on Periscope this morning. I go, Amazon is like the stale bread with the um, you find in the back of your fridge. Draft to Digital is like the new bread with a piece of cheese on it, meaning that. Draft to do dodo is always coming up with cool stuff to help us promote our books. Well, thank you. That's because we listen to authors like you all the time. Oh, well, Wynn, thanks yes. so much for spending the time with me today. This was very inspiring, and I uh, look forward to uh, sharing you with my podcast audience. Thank you. Thank you. I really like what Wynn had to say about the importance of showing people what you can do, not what you can't do. I really admired her passion and her attitude. And it's kind of funny because I think about Wynn spending a full year 
writing her first book, I Win, using Siri, patient, working her way through that entire process, because even though she had a passion for writing, she recognized that it was not going to be easy to actually, you know, write cursively or, or to type because of a cerebral palsy. And she did it. She found a way to do it. I think about, you know, frustrations that writers have where they're dealing with carpal tunnel syndrome or their elbow hurts or there's some sort of uh, physical challenge that they may have to overcome in order to get the book done. And then I think about when using Siri to write the book that first year. And so that kind of inspires me to look at those things, to look at those obstacles that we sometimes put upon ourselves and realize that there's a way around them. There's always some sort of approach. There's always some sort of way that we can make it happen. The importance of not focusing on ways that you can't or why you can't, but focusing on how you can and how you will. That's something I'm going to take with me when I'm looking at some of the goals that I have not been able to achieve. And, you know, I can come up with reasons and say, well, I had uh, this meeting to attend to, or I'm working on this particular project, or I was um, heads down on this task, or I had to take care of this thing or this meet this other deadline. Um, and instead of looking at uh, the excuses what I need to do is I need to look at the ways that I can get the things done that I want to get done on time, on task. I hope you found the conversation with Wynn as inspiring as I did. And I thank you so much for joining me on episode 58 of the Stark Reflections podcast. Again, this is your host, Mark Leslie Lefebvre. Thanks for hanging out with me this week. If you enjoy this podcast, I strongly encourage you to please share it with a friend that you think would find value from this content. Feel free to leave a review, and you can also reach out to me on social media. I'm on Twitter, at Mark Leslie, and you can find me on Instagram, at Mark Leslie Lefebvre. And until next week in episode 59, here's wishing you great writing, good stark reflections, and a can attitude. Thank you for listening to the Stark Reflections podcast. You can find show notes for each episode at starkreflections.ca. The music for this podcast, Laser Groove, was composed and produced by Kevin McLeod. Check out more of Kevin's great music at incomtech.com.